Dr. Murray Banks, our guest speaker for this evening. Thank you very much. The last time I spoke to an audience that resembled this size was in St. Paul, Minnesota, where I was invited to speak to an audience of 10,000 women. I don't know if you can quite picture that. 10,000 women all at one time. Before going on, I was in my hotel pacing back and forth when a lady walked in. She looked at me. She said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm waiting to give a speech. She said, are you nervous? I said, no, I'm never nervous. I said, really? Then what are you doing in the ladies' room? <laughs> now, being a psychologist, people usually walk up to me and say, are you really a psychologist? Say something in psychology. I received a letter the other day from a girl. She wrote me, Dear Dr. Banks, I'm 19 years old. I stayed out till 2 o'clock in the morning last Saturday night. My mother objected. Did I do wrong? I wrote back and said, Try to remember. <laughs> Actually, ladies and gentlemen, the most important thing you can ever learn in psychology is no matter what a person does, no matter what you, your friends, your family, no matter what any human being does, there is always a reason behind it. Of that you may be sure. There's no such thing, no matter how peculiar, of any human behavior without a reason. In Palestine, for example, there was an old man standing at the wailing wall crying. He said, oh, I want to go where my people are. I want to go where my people are. A man walked by, said, what are you crying about? You're in Palestine. Where are your people? He said, in Miami Beach. <laughs> you see, there is always a reason, isn't there? Of course, if you ever hope to understand another human being, if you ever hope to influence another human being, you must understand them in terms of his wants. What does he want? His reasons. Because unless you know that there is no such thing as human behavior without a reason, you can never understand what makes a person do what he does. Well, what do human beings want? What do you want? What do any of us want? Actually, ladies and gentlemen, the whole drama of life springs out of four basic wants. Four things that make us all do what we do. Here they are in a nutshell. One, I want to live. How long? Forever. Oh, you'll hear people say, ah, when I'm 90, I don't care if I'm dead. And that's just the way you feel until you're 89. <laughs> and that's why people buy Carter's Little Liver Pills. Have you heard of the woman who had been taking Carter's Little Liver Pills for over 20 years? And when she died, they had to beat her liver to death with a stick. <laughs> now let's wait till that spreads over to this section over here, shall we? Take, take such a thing even as a washing machine. Now why do you think a woman buys a washing machine? You think she buys it because she wants to make clothes whiter? I oh, know, I oh, know. When the salesman says, Madam, this machine will add 20 years to your life. Just bring the machine right in, please. Just bring it right in. We all want to live and be healthy. And anyone who shows us how to do it better will always get our business. Two, I want a feeling of importance. Prestige, power, respect. We all want that. That's why we say, who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> and that's what makes people brag and show off. One girl was comparing a sweater she had bought with her friends. She said, ha! Huh, my sweater is 100% virgin wool. Her friend said, well, so what if mine's had little experience? <laughs> I once asked my students, how many of you know where virgin wool comes from? And one fellow said, from the sheep that runs the fastest. Did you ever see a little boy who goes swimming or skating? He always says, Mama, Mama, watch me. Watch me, Mama! So Mama can say, Oh, you're wonderful, wonderful. And he loves that praise. And adults are just the same. Of course, we can't go around saying, Everybody, please, watch me, watch me. 
Now we do it with our cars, clothes, furs. Why does every woman want a fur coat, especially a mink coat? Now, skunk will keep you just as warm as mink. He says, no, no, I've got to have mink. Now, listen, the only one who really needs a mink is a mink. He's got to have it. Now, just give it a little thought. <laughs> and you'll soon see there's really very little difference between infants and adults. Although one lady said to me, tell me, do infants have as much fun in infancy as adults do in adultery? <laughs> uh, the answer is no. Now, in... In connection with the feeling of importance, tell me, what is it that you say when you are introduced to someone for the first time? Do you say, how do you do? Well, if you do, they're going to forget you in just about one half minute. What you should say, if you can, is, oh, Mr. Bunchnuck, well, I've heard so many nice things about you. Then he spends half the night wondering, what did you hear? <laughs> and how can he find out what you've heard? Of course, don't say, I've heard so many things about you. Because if you do, he thinks, my God, maybe he knows. <laughs> you, you've got to be a little tactful. It's the same when you're asked an embarrassing question. Don't say it's none of your business. Be like the Irishman who said to the Jewish man, tell me, why do you Jews always answer a question with a question? He said, why shouldn't we? <laughs> you know, I think this side is smarter than this side. The third want is, I want someone to love me. We all want to be loved, and every woman would like to marry and marry well. Of course, a woman doesn't want to marry any simpleton. She's waiting for a special simpleton. <laughs> and many of them get them, too. I see you know who they are, don't you? <laughs> if you want to see who are marvelous psychologists in business, just look at the perfume manufacturers. Now, they're really shrewd. They've analyzed what people want, they've analyzed the reasons, and they've labeled the product accordingly. Did you ever notice the names they give to women's perfumes? My sin, taboo, unfinished business. <laughs> One of my students told me he expects to make a fortune on a new aftershave lotion for men, because it drives women crazy. It smells like money. <laughs> did, did you ever hear lovers speak? Promise me you love me forever. Promise me. What a thing to ask someone to promise. Would you plant a tree in your yard and then say, tree, promise me you'll bloom forever. Even though I nip you in the bud, promise me. One newlywed said to her husband, she said, Herman, do you love me? He said, yes. She said, would you, would you die for me? He said, no, mine is an undying love. <laughs> now, what would you say is the fourth Thing that every human being wants that I haven't mentioned. Anybody, you can call it out. Any, what's the fourth thing we want that I haven't mentioned? Money. The only reason you ever work for a piece of printed paper is because it gets you what you really want. Listen, Henry Ford, with all his money, never had a Cadillac. <laughs> well, he didn't want one. Security, if you have health, power, love, you'll be so secure you won't be able to budge. Security is getting these things. The fourth want, ladies and gentlemen, you'd be out of business tomorrow if it weren't for it. I want a little variety, something new, different. That's why you're here tonight. You get tired of eating home every night. You want to change. One of the top psychological problems in industry is the problem of monotony, sameness, routine. We all want something new, different, change. Well, here are things that every human being wants. Yet not one of you, sitting here tonight, can ever hope to have complete fulfillment in all of them. Well, now, that's impossible. We're all destined to be frustrated in some of these things. Someone you love may die. Your health may break. Business may go bankrupt. Here's a girl who wants a little variety, a little romance. What is she? She's a comptometer operator. All day long, she must sit and comptomt. <laughs> and you're going to be frustrated even though you be a multimillionaire. May I protest right now against loveless marriages? If you marry someone for money only without love, well, 
the best I can say is you will suffer in comfort. <laughs> One married woman said to me, I'm suffering anyway, I may as well suffer in comfort. <laughs> I used to do a great deal of marriage counseling, and it was always interesting to see how lucky men were in the game of love and marriage. Not women, men. A man, no matter how old he is or how homely he is, if he wants to marry or remarry, he doesn't have much trouble. But a woman, how old is she? What does she look like? Now, if a girl goes out with a homely fellow, what do people say? He's got character. <laughs> On him, it doesn't show, but he's got it. <laughs> but if a fellow goes out with a homely girl, they say if Moses had seen her, there'd be another commandment. 